Hello, my dear students and listeners at home. You are welcome to online teaching from St. Charles College of Nature. I am your chemistry teacher, Mrs. Uche Mokwe. In today's teaching online, we are going to continue our lesson on electrolysis. This time around, we are going to look at Faraday's laws of electrolysis and its calculation. Before we proceed, I would like us to look at the specific objective. My dear students, by the end of today's lesson, you will be able to, number one, state three factors that determines the quantity or mass of product deposited during electrolysis. Secondly, state Faraday's laws of electrolysis. Finally, solve problems on electrolysis. In our previous lesson, we learned the electrolysis of acidified water, brine, and copper to the doses of phases. These electrolysis demonstrate the effect of the preferential discharge of ion at the electrode during electrolysis. In the electrolysis of acidified water, hydrogen gas was discharged at the cathode and chlorine gas at the anode. Thus, demonstrating the effect of position of the ion at the chemical series. In the process of brine, hydrogen gas was also discharged at the, electro, at the cathode and chlorine gas at the anode, thereby demonstrating the effect of concentration of the ion. In the process of copper 2, the doses of phase 6, using different electrodes, copper anode in particular, Nothing comes out of the anode. Copper anode dissolves in solution, loses the electron, and moves to the cathode, where it is discharged as copper metal. In all this electrolysis, we were not told the quantity or mass of this product that we are discharged. We were just told the names of the ions that we are discharged. Therefore, during the process of electrolysis, there are factors that affect the mass or product of or product deposited at the electrode during electrolysis. These factors include number one, the magnitude of the steady current, meaning the size of the current, how intensive the current is. Is the current low current or is it a high current? Because we all know that. Eh, during electrolysis, that current must be passed for electrolysis to proceed. The second factor is the time of passing the steady current. That is, that steady current that was passed, how long did it last? Did it last for one hour, for 10 seconds, for one minute? Lastly, the charge on the ion of the element that is deposited. What is the charge on the ion that, that is to be de deposited? Is the ion having a charge of plus one, charge of plus two, or charge of plus three, and so on? All these things will automatically affect the mass or product or the quantity of this elect of, of this ion that are discharged. This quantitative aspect of electrolysis was determined by a scientist called uh, Michael Faraday in his first and second laws of uh, electrolysis. My dear students, let us now look at the Faraday's laws of electrolysis. And we are starting with the first law. Faraday's first, of, uh, first law of electrolysis states that the mass of a substance liberated at the electrode during electrolysis is directly proportional to the quantity of electricity passing through the electrolyte. Let me state it again. The Faraday's laws of electrolysis says that the mass of a substance liberated at the electrode during electrolysis is directly proportional to the quantity of electricity passing through the electrolyte. Mathematically, M is directly proportional to Q, meaning that if you are asked to represent Faraday's law, first law, mathematically, 
it is a m small m directly proportional to q this small m is mass and q is a quantity of electricity and q is equal to it i means a current and t means a time therefore if m is proportional to q and q is equal to it it then means that uh, m is proportional to it or m is equal to kit here this k stands for constant known as electrochemical equivalence of a substance the unit of q is columns capital c i which is current the unit is a uh, ampere capital a and T is a time, and it is in seconds. Therefore, making K the subject of the formula, because I want us to derive a general formula for calculating a Faraday's law. So, making K the subject of the formula, and I have that K is equal to small m divided by I T. The reciprocal of k, that is 1 over k. We all know that reciprocal means turning a number upside down. So, if you turn k upside down, it becomes uh, 1 over k. So, the reciprocal k, which is 1 over k, is the charge to mass ratio. It is expressed in coulombs per gram. That is, if m is equal, if k is equal to m over it, then its reciprocal becomes uh, 1 over k is equal to it over small m. That is the first equation. Thus, from Faraday's first law, it over small m is a constant. That gives us our equation 2. In order to liberate one mole m gram of an element with a charge small t, small c, the number of Faraday's of electricity required is C. That is C, small c over capital F, divided by capital M. That gives us our equation 3. So that if we combine equation 2 and equation 3, we now have I T over small m is equal to C F over capital M. If you now rearrange this equation, we have that I T over cf is equal to small m over capital m and because small m over capital m is, a, is the amount in mole of an element deposited that means that small m is equal to small m over capital m equal to it over cf this is the formula for faraday's first law now where m is mass of the element deposited in grams that is the small m means uh, mass of element deposited in gram capital m means uh, molar mass of the element which is in gram per mole i is the current it is in, in ampere small c is the charge on the ion and t is time in seconds and f is faraday's which is equivalent to 96500 uh, coulombs let us now look at Faraday's second laws of electrolysis. He says that when the same quantity of electricity is passed through different electrolytes, when the same quantity of electricity is passed through different electrolytes, the relative number of moles of each element deposited is inversely proportional to the charge on the ion of the element. Mathematically, small m, which is a mole, is, is inversely proportional to 1 over c meaning that a small m c is equal to k where n is the amount in mole of the element liberated and c is the charge on the ion therefore if the same quantity of electricity is passed through three different uh, electrolytes in series the various amount of elements for n1 n2 and n3 liberated 
will be related to the charge, which is uh, C1, C2, and C3 on their ion by the expression N1, C1 is equal to N2, C2 is equal to N3, C3. And because amount N in mole is equal to small n equal to small m over capital M, then small m over capital M1, C1, is equal to small m over capital M2, C2, equal to small m over capital M3, C3. This is the formula for calculating Faraday's second law of electrolysis. Calculations involving electrolysis. My dear students, before we go into these calculations, I would like us to look at the following because this will help us to understand the calculation very well. Now, from Faraday's first law, M is directly proportional to Q. And we have known that Q is equal to IT and that 1F is equivalent to 96,500 columns, which is also equivalent to one mole of an element. And one mole of an element is equal to 6.02 multiplied by 10 raised to the power of 23 electrons. That is uh, Avogadro's uh, constant. So what I'm trying to say here is that uh, one Faraday means uh, one mole of element. And one mole of element means uh, 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 electrons. This is known as uh, Avogadro's uh, constant. Now, when one mole of a single charge ion is discharged, one mole of electron is transferred. For example, silver ion will gain one electron to be deposited as silver metal. This one electron means uh, one mole. And that silver metal means uh, one mole of uh, silver, which is equivalent to 108 grams of uh, silver, which is the molar, which is the atomic mass of uh, silver. Now, if one mole, if one electron means one mole, then that one mole also means uh, one Faraday. And one Faraday is uh, 96,500 columns, and it will be equivalent to one mole, which is also 108 grams of uh, silver, meaning that uh, that one, one electron that is that that uh, that silver gain to become silver metal means one mole of electron, meaning one Faraday, and all this thing will give us uh, one mole of uh, silver, which is uh, equivalent to 108 grams, which is uh, atomic mass of uh, silver. Then. For a divalent metal like copper, like calcium, like uh, magnesium, two Faradays, meaning two multiplies 96,500 columns of electricity, we deposit one mole of the metal. The Russian equation on the screen, we see copper 2 gaining two electrons to be deposited as a uh, copper metal. That two electrons means uh, two moles of electron. Depositing one mole of uh, copper. One mole of copper is equivalent to 63.5 grams of uh, copper, atomic mass of uh, copper. That two electrons, meaning two moles, also means uh, two Faradays. Two Faradays of electron, two Faradays of electricity, we deposit uh, one mole of uh, copper, which is still 63.5 grams, atomic mass of uh, copper. And also, three Faradays will discharge one mole of a trivalent element like uh, aluminum. Aluminum is a trivalent element. Therefore, for aluminum to be discharged, aluminum will gain three electrons to be, de to be deposited as aluminum metal. The three electrons means uh, three moles, giving us uh, one mole of aluminum, equivalent to 27 grams atomic mass of uh, aluminum. These three electrons, meaning three moles, also means uh, three Faradays. We give us one mole of uh, aluminum, which is uh, 27 grams. 
Then, for a diatomic diabetic element like uh, oxygen, four paradays. Four paradays means uh, four times 96,500 columns will liberate one mole of, uh, of the element. The Russian equation is uh, four hydroxide ion will, will, will lose four electrons to be deposited as uh, two molecules of uh, water and one molecule of uh, oxygen. One molecule of oxygen will be deposited by uh, four moles of electrons, meaning that uh, that's four E. Four electrons means uh, four moles of electron. And the four moles of, four moles of electron means uh, four Faradays, giving us four multiply 96,500 uh, columns. Finally, I'm going to give you a general formula. We stated that for a metal, with charge C, that is M raised to the power C plus, comma, C Faraday's, meaning C multiply 96,500 columns, will be required to deposit one ball of it, meaning MC plus plus uh, C electron will give us uh, M, meaning that uh, CF will give us one mole, and one mole is uh, M gram. DC can be one, can be two, can be three. Then the small m represents uh, the name of the elements can be aluminum, it can be silver, it can be gold. The capital M there means uh, the molar mass of, uh, of the metal. And one mole of a chemical substance is the relative molecular mass of the element expressed in grams. Example 1. A current of 0 0.72 ampere was passed through a solution of an electrolyte for 3 hours, 20 minutes. Calculate quantity of electricity that was passed. Solution. We are asked to calculate the quantity of electricity cure, which is equal to IT from Faraday's first law. And I is equal to 0 0.72 ampere, that is the current, and T, which is the time, is 3 hours, 20 minutes. We have to convert this 3 hours, 20 minutes to seconds, and we get 12,000 seconds. Therefore, cure will be 0 0.72 multiplied by 12,000 and we get 8,640 columns. That will be the quantity of current that will be used when, I'm sorry, that will be the quantity of electricity that will be passed when a current of 0 0.72 ampere is passed through a solution for 3 hours 20 minutes. Example 2. When a current of 0 0.20 ampere was passed through an electrolyte, 1,200 columns of electricity was used. Calculate the time of the current flow. Here, we are asked to calculate the time. And again, from Faraday's first law, we learned that eh, Q is equal to IT. We now make T the subject of the formula, and we get that eh, T is equal to Q over I. Therefore, we now divide 1,200 divided by 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and we get 6,000 seconds. That is the time that is needed. Example 3. Calculate the mass of silver deposited when a current of 2.6 ampere is passed for 70 minutes. Silver, the atomic mass is 108. One per day is 96,500 columns. Here, we are going to solve this one using two methods. Method one, using Q is equal to IT. And here, I is a 2.6 ampere, T is a 17 minutes. You change, you change to seconds by multiplying 70 times 60. Therefore, our Q is equal to 2 times 6. Multiply by 70 times 60, giving us uh, 10,120 columns. And from Russian equation, we know that uh, silver ion will gain one electron to be deposited as silver metal. And one Faraday of uh, electricity means uh, one mole of uh, silver, meaning that uh, that one electron there means one Faraday which is equivalent to one mole of silver. And one mole of silver, the atomic mass is uh, 108 grams. One Faraday means uh, 
96,500 columns. So 96,500 columns will liberate 108 grams of air cell over. Therefore, 10,920 columns will liberate how many? Now have 10,920 multiplied by 108 all over 96,500. And we get 12.2 grams. Or we can use another method, method 2. Here, we are going to apply that form, the other formula we obtain as Faraday's first law. Using small m of a capital M is equal to IT divided by CF. The reason why we're using this formula here is because we are giving the name of the element. The name of the element is silver. And with the name, we can now get the charge on the ion. So, in this equation, capital M, which is the molar mass of silver, is 108. I is current 2.6. T is second. Is T is time, which is 70 divided times 60, giving us 4,200 seconds. Then, C is the charge on the silver. Silver ion, the charge is plus one. And then, Faraday is 96,500 coulombs. Therefore, we now make small m, so that of the formula. We get m, i, t, divided by a, c, f is equal to small m. And that small m is the mass. And this will now give us 108 multiplied by 2.6 multiplied by 4,200 all over 1 times 96,500. This will give us 12.2 eh, grams. Example 4. A current is passed through three electrolytic cells connected in series containing solutions of silver trioxonitrate 5, copper 2, tedoso sulfate and the brine, respectively. If 15.2 grams of copper is deposited in the second electrolytic cell, calculate the first one, mass of silver deposited in the first cell, number two, the volume of chlorine that liberated in the third cell at 70 degrees Celsius at 800 millimeter mercury pressure. One Faraday is 96,500 seconds. Molar volume of gas at STP is 22.4 DNQ. Solution, this is Faraday's second law because Three electrolytes were connected in series. The first question, we are asked to calculate the mass of a silver metal deposited. And we are going to use the Faraday second law of electrolysis. The formula is M small m over capital M1, C1 is equal to small m for capital M2, C2, where the small m is 15.2 grams, capital M is 63.5. This capital M means the molar mass of a copper. C1 is 2, which is the charge on copper. Capital M2 is the molar mass of a silver. It is 108. C2 is a, the charge on silver, which is 1. And then small, and we are looking for small m. Therefore, making small m, so that of the formula, we now have that eh? small m is 15.2 multiply by 2, multiply by 108, all over 63.5, multiply by 1. And if you calculate it, this, we are going to get 51.7 grams. On the second question, we are asked to calculate the volume of chlorine that was liberated. Before we do that, we have to find the quantity of electricity that will liberate 15.2 grams of copper. From the Russian equation, copper 2 ion will gain 2 electrons, to be deposited as copper metal. This, that two electrons means eh, two Faradays. And the, the copper metal means eh, one mole of copper. The atomic mass of eh, 63.5 grams. Therefore, 63.5 grams of copper requires eh, two Faradays, which is eh, 193,000 coulombs. Then, 15.2 grams will require 193,000 Multiply by 15.2 all over 63.5. You calculate it and you're going to get 46,198 columns. Now, from Russian equation, we notice that uh, two chloride ion will lose two electrons to be deposited as a chlorine molecule. And there we have uh, one mole of chlorine molecule requires uh, 
too far like this because it is two electrons that eh, liberated that one mole of one mole of eh, chlorine molecule. So one mole of chlorine is equal to two Faradays. And then 22.4 dm cube is equivalent to two Faradays, which is eh, 193,000 coulombs because one mole of any gas occupies a volume of eh, 22.4 dm cube at STP. And because one mole of chlorine at, of chlorine molecule was discharged by two Faradays, which is uh, one and three thousand columns. Because of that, we are now going to find the volume that will be that will, that the volume which forty six thousand hundred and ninety eight columns that we have, and that will give us uh, twenty two point four multiplied by forty six thousand hundred and ninety eight all over 193,000. And if you do the calculation, we are going to get a 5.3 cm cube, or you convert to cm cube and it becomes a 53.6 cm cube. Finally, we're going to look at the last example. Example five, it says, calculate the volume of oxygen evolved at STP. When a current of 1.22 ampere is passed through dilute the doses of a cis acid for 3.5 minutes. GMV means gram molecular volume of gas at STP, and it is uh, 22.4 dmq. Again, one Faraday is 96,500 columns. Solution. Again, we are going to calculate quantity of electricity using a uh, Q is equal to IT. I is 1.22, T is 3.5 minutes. Therefore, T now becomes a uh, 1.22 multiplied by 3.5 times 60. That's what we are trying to convert 3.5 minutes to seconds. That is the reason why we will now multiply 3.5 by 60. And we calculate and we get 256.2 columns. Again, from Russian equation, four hydrozard ion will be will gain four electrons. Four hydrozard ion will lose four electrons to be deposited as two molecules of water and one molecule of uh, oxygen. That one molecule of oxygen means one mole of oxygen being deposited by four electrons. If four electrons means uh, four Faradays, and all of this we give will be, we have the volume of uh, 22.4 dm cube. As I said earlier on that, uh, one mole of any gas occupies the volume of uh, 22.4 dm cube at STP. Therefore, if four Faradays, which is 386,000 columns occupies a volume of uh, 22.4 dm cube because 386,000 columns is equivalent to one mole of uh, oxygen. Then 256.2 columns occupy what volume? We now have that uh, 220. We now have that uh, 256.2 multiplied by 22.4 all over 386. Thousand, we calculate and we get 0 0.015 dm cube. We convert to cm cube, it becomes uh, 15 cm cube. My dear students, we've come to the end of today's lesson. I'm going to evaluate you with the following questions. Number one, state four factor, state the factors affecting the mass of product liberated at the electrode during, electro during electrolysis. Number two, state Faraday's first loss electrolysis. Number three, explain briefly why different quantities of electricity are required to deposit one mole of copper and one mole of silver, respectively. Number four, determine the mass of copper deposited by 4.0 moles of electrons and the reaction presented by the equation Cu2 plus plus two electron gives us a Cu. Number five, after passing a current of 0.45 amperes for 25 minutes, 0.221 grams of copper was deposited. Calculate the relative atomic mass of uh, copper. Finally, calculate the mass of aluminium deposited when a current of 2.98 ampere is passed through the solution of aluminium salt for one hour, 35 minutes. Aluminium is uh, 27, that is atomic mass. One Faraday is uh, 
9,500 You submit your questions and assignment to my WhatsApp number 080-36-271397 080-36-271397 And for our next lesson, I would like us to read, I would like you to read up uh, hydrocarbons. Thank you, my dear students, for listening and continue to stay safe.